Right, Club Cable. The night's not done yet. Up stepping, Elijah and Skillio. Anti DJ Pioneer. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows this? Yeah, yeah. Introduction, the Butters label. Right now it's Club Cable. Grime is very lucky to have someone like Elijah doing, doing what he's doing because without Butters, I think Grime would be very, very boring at the moment. Come on, that's it, just move. Yeah, the open source thing, that idea is ingenious. If I'd done that, I'd have been like, no, I ain't doing that. But Elijah, let's do it. Elijah. I don't know, what other, what, what other label can you holler at and just say, can I remix this? Like, there ain't really, like, nothing like that. There wasn't any, certainly wasn't anything like that when I was growing up. You get people from even around the world, even around the UK, around the world, Europe, everywhere. Like, just sort of tapping into what you're doing. Big shout to Blacks! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Black. Yeah, what happened is um, like this 17 year old, like Rince having a, um, a kind of producing academy where they bring in young people and a guy that's about 17, he came up to us and was like, yo man, like, like, I really respect what you do and like, really enjoy the show and stuff. I was like, shit, I'm like, when I was 17, like the DJs that I liked was, like, still, most of them are still on Rince now. So it's something that I would have said to my favorite DJ. And, and I thought, He's 17, say next year he's 18. The first kind of raves he'll go to are Butters raves. And that's going to set out his whole expectation of what raving is and what you know, he wants to get out of clubbing. Right? And I didn't want, I want to put on something that people you know, want to pay £10 for or want to pay £13 for, do you know what I mean? And then when they go somewhere else, they'll be like, I thought, I thought raving was supposed to be like, like how it was at Butters. And, it, and it's not, and then, I mean. Yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah! Hey, hey, hey! What's still? Bit of danger! It's still a young man! Hey, hey! Yeah, yeah! Anyone that's, that's listened to us over the last year, I'd like to think that they've had, like, an involvement in deciding the releases, you know? Like, the, the thing, the reason why certain tunes come out is because of the feedback from them. Like with I Am, it was it was on Trim's mixtape in March, and you know the feedback was really good. Yeah. Like we gave him the beat in November or something, and it came out on his mixtape in March, and it was still getting good feedback, still getting good plays. You know, people asking about it still, and then it was like, all right, let's just package this up. You know, get out on vinyl. We're all the same family, because in the, the day when um, Elijah started the label, I was about, you sure, vinyl? Crazy, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and then look where we are, like, and he was right, because when I started leaving the country, people go, I can't wait for your release, some butters and hard job, and I put them, okay, vinyl does sell. With TRC, who hadn't been kind of exposed before in the grime scene, so it was like, all right, let's, um, let's give it a try. And on that EP it has, you know, the track that eventually became Boo You Here, and one of the tracks that eventually became I Am. So it was like probably like one of our best signings because we've, you know, we've used it in so many different ways. And I'd, I always thought that I wanted the, the releases to kind of be open, like ne maybe never ending. Not to say you want to rinse your kind of signed out, but I never wanted to think, oh, that's a, you know, it's closed. Once you've released something, it's done, done, dusted. I always kind of had that. You know, like how Beyonce's song, she's got the song over Major Lazer's song. Yeah. Like, that could easily happen. Like, Jasmine, like, or Katie B could vocal Orange Aid. Same and song. Yeah. yeah, like, reversion. Like, you laugh, but that's what's happening in, in, in commercial world. In the commercial world. Not even just, like, in the dance world. Like, it happens in the commercial world. Like, it's happened with um, Kanye West and Jay-Z's vocal, like, a Flux Pavilion beat that's been reversion. 
he would have a tune and the MCs would hear it on the radio, the DJ would play it and they would say, look, I want to hit, I want that tune, I want to vocal it. And that's how the vo most of the vocals came about because they were hearing the, the tunes on the sets and they would vocal the big beats. And then that kind of stopped happening when people did mixtapes. Producers started making things specifically for them. So it hadn't been tried and tested with the radio and the clubs and that kind of stuff. But with Boo You, the instrumental was tried and tested, you know, it was supposed for six, seven months. And it was kind of just crying out for vocal. And uh, and then when it happened, it was like, yeah, it makes complete sense. It was like it kind of got planned all along. Yeah, the open source thing. That idea is ingenious. If I'd done that, I'd have been like, no, I ain't doing that. But Elijah goes, let's do it. You know what, cool, because music's kind of more or less free. Like, I don't know anyone that's really bought it unless they're really supporting the artist. So it's like it's changed from buying an album, then going to see the artist free, to getting music free, which you shouldn't do, to come to the events and supporting. So, you know, it's a brilliant move. Yeah, Big for Elijah. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, that's what he's here for. I'm, I'm just the enforcer to make the music, make sure the quality of the music's good. So anytime Elijah's got tunes and he's, and he's signing them, I'm, 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 see, I work for his label as well. I'm like, Mm, get him to mix that again, or give me the parts and I'll mix it. Do you know, like, or you, I don't like that record, but it could work. Do you know what I mean? We're always each other's second ears, you know what I mean? With Terra Danger, um, he was one of the first people that we, used, we spoke about when we wanted to start the label. And, you know, one of the few people that I didn't think we were crazy. And I said, yeah, we want you to be first. And he said, all right, I'll make you some tunes over the phone. And like, over the space of two days, he made the whole thing on the phone, literally. The two tracks, um, Bipolar and Air Bubble, on the phone, which I thought was pretty cool. And I thought, I always, I never, I never kind of understood the kind of building process because I don't make beats myself. And that helped me understand so much. So that was in, he made them in November 2009 and they came out in March 2010. People always, with Elijah and Skin, don't understand like, like what co contribution ends where. But like Skillion was playing Woo Rhythm before I even clocked onto it. Is it hello? Yeah. Yeah, I'm outside. I mean inside, bro. Yeah, you can't Alright, cool. Is it is that so? Yeah. But yeah, Skillion like clocked onto Woo Rhythm probably nine months before I was even like phased by it. You know, he's playing it in a set and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. And I don't know what day I got it, but I was like, oh okay, I get it. Main focus is always sort of grime because I used I used to DJ for MCs, so it was a lot. Of, like I had a lot of instrumentals already stacked up because I had to sort of cater for them as well. But it was tunes that I liked. Yeah. See, when we was sort of growing up, it was London based. Oh, yeah. Even somebody in Midlands wouldn't know what's sort of going on in the grime scene at the time. So with all Twitter and Facebook, even a blog, you get people from around the world you're tapping into what you're doing. You don't even know who's listening, but. So when we get feedback, it's, 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 it's nice because you just know that sort of we're touching those areas and stuff. I'd always aim to be DJing, even though I was a producer first, I'd always aim to be DJing and doing this in clubs. I saw, like I just explained to someone, I'd always seen, a, I think actually it was Joker. I saw Joker in a big flyer in Southampton and playing at one of the big clubs and I was just like, He's practically making grime, so why can't I be that guy? Let's get Serato, let's get some decks, and let's let's get like let's get started. Let's do this, like pick up pick up the pieces, and you know form form something great again. When I first started to speak to Elijah, I was just a guy from Southampton. I just used to sit in his boxes at home making tunes on a on a dodgy PC, like. But sending him tunes, him playing out in different countries, playing across the across UK, like he know he obviously has the ear for what sounds good. And he was able to sort of, along with what I'm able to do, he was able to sort of give me the outsider's feedback that I needed. And it wasn't, it wasn't biased. It was telling me what I needed to do, what I didn't need to do. Sometimes when, you, when, you're, when you're so into what you do, you, th you think it's big or everyone knows it. And those kind of things, when we put out videos and and kind of like promotion stuff, and even the nights. You remember how small what we do is. Do you know what I mean, like it's really niche. The like internet makes like things look a lot bigger than it is, man. I'm still trying to keep all these things like in place. You know, vinyl, club nights. You know, t-shirts. I'm trying to still make the physical aspect really important. Like, I mean, we could we could potentially do everything. You know, 
zeros and ones, but I want it, I want pe I don't have anything from not much from my era listening to music. Like a lot of, yeah, like five years of like grime and I have a few CDs and records and you know and like scattered club nights man but hopefully when we get this thing going it can be regular and regular releases and you know like sick packaging like ridiculous like you know what I mean we've only just stepped up out of the light of the last 18 months before there wasn't anyone let me start again before there wasn't anyone that really did it from our scene set for the dubstep producers so you know all the gram DJs you don't really know them like your Logans, just your, your Spirals, they're all coming up, but there isn't much of, set for them, there isn't much personality. So that's what we're bringing to the game. Buzz and Hard Drive's got that personality. Hold so anyway. It's partly what I would want if I was, if I was following Butters. So, you know, I, if I was listening to radio, to Elijah and Skillib on the radio for two hours, and you know, you hear these songs that lost in, in, in time and that, after a while, just just have them, man. Like, it's, I don't think that's a big deal. And you know, other stuff that we do, like if I was a producer, I'd want a shot at remixing a trim song. Like, why not? Like, and you know, or remixing royalty or TRC. Like, I don't know. That that's what I would want if I was in their positions. So it's it's like I'm kind of stepping into the listener. That's like I always kind of do everything geared as me sitting behind the radio. Because I was that person like three years ago.